the Globe and Mail in Canada, and they did uh, why ravines are a Toronto treasure, but everyone needs an equal chance. So they're basically making the case that the Toronto ravines are racist. <laughs> I'm listening. I, yeah. I grew up on a ravine. You did you? Yeah. Okay. It's called No Blacks Allowed Ravine. <laughs> Clan Ravine. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Race, gender, and economic status can all be barriers to the city's green spaces, but there are simple steps, better signs, more volunteer guides that can make the urban wilderness more inclusive. It always starts with the idea that everything that has any sort of disparity in races is racist, mm. unless it's a disparity. And we talked about way. this last week. Hopscotch is racist. But it always people. makes more sense that it's classist not racist but also you could even you could they make just the case assume because there's an assumption made that all poor people are racialized but, but it, you could also make the case that there is cultural things that like okay do you remember yeah, your, of course every, every you know, remember black rich, co black comedy forever was like white people be fucking hiking camping now and it, but right. now it's like yeah white people won't let us hike <laughs> right but for sure it's like i ain't camping it's like i left like my family left where we came from so that we never had to camp again yeah and then yeah. now it's like uh, they're now the, sorry now, for doing that voice by the way now writing like, articles saying that you know let us camp or let them camp who the fuck knows if this person's white or not my guess would be it's a girl that's like indian or something maybe that's a generally that generally i find and i told i had a theory the other day that i think i don't know if i told you this but Oh, maybe I said it on here, but I had a f theory that a lot of the Indian dudes are, are super woke because uh, they came from the Indian parts of India or the the like super <laughs> liberal parts of India. Right, right. <laughs> but but you know what I mean? Because there are some things I think it, there is true if there when there is disparities in their normal things. But some things, you know, if you said, you know, playing hopscotch was that you go, that is more of like a black girl thing to do. Mm -hmm. So there are certain things you could pick sports. You go, I, a cricket is all Indian people. Yeah. I don't say, you know, white people don't have access to the cr cr uh, cricket, you know, fields or whatever. Yeah. You go, well, we don't know about it enough. And that's the problem. And you go, yeah. yeah or your culture doesn't do that as much. And no, we're not interested. So in what? Yeah. yeah. Like no black guys. I know want to go hiking. And it's not because the signs weren't up. They sure. Go, well, like, it's I obviously black people go hiking. The ones that want to, but why is, that better and that's the point that these articles never make is they go why is it better that more black people hike you go well but you, go, you can make the argument you go well because it's better for shape you go well a lot of black people play basketball or a lot of like uh fucking uh european racist, brown right? dudes play fucking soccer mm -hmm. you see like adult grown men like greece like sure, where they're yeah, fucking yeah. not quite white but there's some olive yeah a lot of olives play you know soccer instead of you know, of course, a white fucking nerd that might go be more likely to go hiking. Not me, because I'm a cool fucking urban white. <laughs> it's like golfing. It's like a lot of white people golf or whatever. It's just because other people are not interested. I don't know. It's like people think it's lame. And yeah, and you have to take them case by case. Because even as you're saying that, I'm like, well, there yeah. is a case to be made for golfing well, that is actually I sort of discriminatory towards poor people because it's, it's a expensive. gazillion. But dollar. so is hockey. But I didn't. That's why I didn't pick hockey. Mm. We're talking about hiking. Yeah, hiking, I'm saying. hiking's free. If your point is yeah, I that, can see that with golf in actually. Toronto, you know, it's poor kids can't play hockey. That's been made since the beginning of time. Yeah. And there are Tim Hortons has 10,000 charities. Go and Any Tim Hortons. They have Hockey's a charity crazy for poor expensive. people to play hockey. Well, yeah. And they have 10,000 fucking charities for right. all that yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that point has been made and, and fair. The that, hiking, you know, uh, hiking is free. Hiking is free, but their point is, yes, but... Well, we'll find out what their point is. What is their point? They said, at least in theory, but it doesn't often work this way. Jacqueline Scott, a keen outdoors woman who is black, so rarely comes across someone like her that she started blogging about her experiences, which is funny because, you know, out of the when they say, I saw so little black people, I had to blog about this. Really? Or are you a blogger? Yeah. I, I, you thought that that might. Some yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you a blogger looking for gripes? <laughs> or did you start? Were you a blogger before? Yeah. Or what, did you go hiking and you go, no, this is no good. Yeah, she probably like, goes to a synagogue. She's like, I noticed there's not a lot of black people at this synagogue. <laughs> that has to have happened. There has to be an article about <laughs> black people that that synagogues are racist. Uh, I remember the first time I ever saw it, like, I was like, probably. Tamara is a black Jew. I know. I I think I was maybe like 12 the first time I saw a black Jew. And I was like, I honestly was like, I didn't know that was possible. I know craziest, most aggressive uh, 
uh, fucking roast joke against Tamara when we did her roast or whatever. I said that because she's black and she's bigger, and I said because she's black and Jewish. When they put her in the oven, she still likes the smell of fried chicken. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> it's pretty aggressive, but it was it was a, it was a fucking aggressive roast in general. Yeah, but but um, uh, okay, so they go. If you don't see yourself there, you're less likely to go. She said, "It's a sense of, it's a sense of, am I going to be okay? And if there's a group of us, is somebody going to call the police and say, oh my god, black people are hanging out in the woods?'" Well, this goes back to that thing always. If I saw a group of white people. And you said, are, what are they wearing? Are they wearing hiking gear? Yeah, exactly. Or clans I was, robes? I was literally going to say that exact same thing. Yeah, are these black people, is it, if you were hiking and you saw, you know, nine people fucking smoking weed and they look like fucking G-Unit, if they are white or black, right. you might be a little, I don't think I'd call, anyone's going to call in the cops, call the but they like, might go, maybe not go that way. Right. Yeah, 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 for sure. But are they, if, yeah, if they're dressed in like it, wearing like, Morel shoes or something and like, yeah. you know, they have like a, wa- a water bottle dangling from a carabiner. You call the cops? Yeah, just because they're black. Like, no, it never happens. A woman, a black woman with a carabiner. You, this is also, Toronto is the most diverse city in the fucking world. Yeah. Who doesn't know a thousand black people? Yeah. That my, you would. My, my mom. But you go, that that, that, that would happen? Yeah, yeah. That's so funny. And when well, I think of I, think of a group of thugs in Toronto, right? Mm-hmm. Generally, there's white people in that group, right? Yeah. Like where I grew up, if I picture the ten people that were the most gangster, three of those were white people. Mm-hmm. That's just what it is when you grow up in any you know suburb of Toronto or anywhere near Toronto. Yeah. It's all fucking tons of white gangsters. Yeah. Mine was all. Imagine right. you saw a bunch of people from behind. You know, backwards hat, jersey on, like down to the, the pants, like so Exco, low, Exco, Exco pants, the whole, like, yeah, they dress 90s thug, decked out from behind, and then you kind of are like, oh, let's not, and then they turn around, they're white thugs, and you go, oh, phew. Yeah, no, no, 100%. You're, it's exactly off, the same. She doesn't even, I like, I mean, I'm curious, but does she have one incident where, like, black hikers had the police called on them? Because I imagine she's just saying this as a straight hypothetical. hypothetical. Well, she's saying she feels that way. She's like, when I'm in the woods. But like, can you say this has ever happened once where one black group of hikers, or she's saying black people could never hike because this is certain to happen. She, it's yeah. That's why they can't hike because they know that that's how they feel. That, right. That's and even like, if it's not happening, they feel like it might. Well, right. She does. Sounds like a chick thing to say. And but also you, it's such a chick thing. To yeah. Say. I go. I feel like it. You go. Okay. Your feelings are wrong. I <laughs> I had this. I had this argument. This, this is like one of the things where I go like. I had this one one of my exes. I was like, this is not going to work. Where she would always just have these, but like because I was kind of over the relationship, and then she would say these things. She's like, well, I feel this way. I'm like, yes, that's fine. Your feelings are wrong. You were the original facts. Don't care about your feelings. I was. I straight up was like, <laughs> I'm like, it's fine to feel this way, but like you have to at least consider that your feelings could be incorrect. Yeah. Even, but she's like, they're my I feelings. I feel like it's seven o'clock. It's four. Yeah. And I go, okay. It's, I'm, I'm sure you feel that way. You're wrong. And they're like, no, but they're my feelings. I'm like, yeah, I get what you're saying, but no, your feelings are wrong. It is. They, girls don't like to hear thing. that, though. That it's, their feelings are wrong. Well, girls also, it's this idea because they've been told that their feelings are right. They've been told that their feelings have been right, and they've also been told that that they should they should uh, have more of them doing everything. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like when girls do a thing that's all guys. The answer is not that I'm doing a thing that's mostly guys do. The thing is that they're this is wrong. Yeah. So it's like if a girl goes to the woods and it's like mostly a bunch of dudes there, there are, you know, people that aren't the same color as them. Their answer is like, this is wrong. But it's again, if I started playing cricket, it would be me and all brown dudes. And my answer wouldn't be, wow, they need to get more white people in cricket. My answer yeah. would be like, yeah, I'm kind of doing the fucking thing Indian dudes do. Yeah. I mean, I'll say this. So, you know, like McCarran Park over in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, yeah. they have all these like barbecues. And if you go there on like a Saturday, it's, Everybody's like cooking up a storm, right? Yeah. And it's usually not white people. No, it's are, mostly like Latino. Yeah, but there are some white people. And like it's a thing. People just know. You go, yeah, like the people go and they have these big blowout part, like huge like party barbecue things. And I'm sure there was a point when there was no white people. And then some white person's like, that looks fun. But like nobody was ever stopping them. They're public barbecues. Yeah. You know, and then eventually someone had to be like, I want to do that. I'm sure nobody was like, hey, get off our turf. Like it's a fucking public McCarran Park in Williamsburg. Yeah, but people exactly. are like, oh, I don't know. I don't want to be the... People are like, I don't want to be the only one doing it. But like, nobody's stopping you. 
Nobody's stopping you. No, nobody's stopping you from no, going to have a barbecue. Especially no one's stopping you from having Hiking, a hike. A hike, yeah. In the trail. Like, but it's like, this is the Globe and Mail, and you go, and no one is just like, come on. <laughs> no one in Canada is but, stopping you. It, it, but this is that fucking you know, nanny state shit where it's like, this is the government's fault now? Like, the government has done something I, wrong. I'm interested in what she proposes they do. Uh, I mean, in her first sentence, she proposed they don't have enough signs. Like, it also, you know, which is always that stuff that seems, you know, races where it's like, well, black people just don't know even where the hiking trails are, you know? Okay. She said they need more. She need better signs, more volunteer guides. You know, they need to fucking. Well, you need to be, you had your hand held, walked around a fucking That's park? That's essentially what she's uh, proposing, yes. Okay. Yeah, she goes. Um, if you don't see yourself there, you're less likely to go. Um, but full public inclusion in the ravines is an issue that goes beyond race. Women also may not feel comfortable walking the paths and they have blind corners or poor lighting. Homeless people can be kept out by design decisions that are meant to deter them, such as uncomfortable benches. All right, this is ridiculous. I've <laughs> hiked a lot. I actually do go on hikes. We went yeah. to Austin. I went on a hike. There's women everywhere. Yeah. Nobody's keeping but women But they don't feel of... safe because you're there. It should be only it's black people. during the day. <laughs> <laughs> it's a day hiking is not a nighttime activity <laughs> more importantly they uh, they can't stick to the one thing like she's like we need more black hikers in one in one second it's we need more black hikers we need more women hikers and more homeless hikers right. yeah, more homeless hikers Have like, you ever met homeless home? people are tired they, they don't, don't want to go homeless their people. whole life is a hike <laughs> homeless people <laughs> i don't think homeless people want to go on a hike but she's sort of saying that the homeless people could go live there and it was like, and yeah, she, they can live anywhere. They're but, homeless. But she's saying they make benches that deter homeless people. But in the same That's breath, true. she, yeah, but in the same breath, she goes, women aren't feeling safe there. Also, we need to park full with homeless people. <laughs> can we get some fucking <laughs> yeah, drug for, addicts for in the safety. park? Yeah. Also like hike, like, I don't understand. Cause like when I picture hiking, like these are more remote things. They don't have benches at these places that you can't sleep on because they're like, you have to drive to get out to... Uh, no, you take the subway in Toronto. That's oh, I guess fun. you take the subway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but. Well, she doesn't... She also had a gripe about the subway. It should have been directly there. We have to walk five minutes from the stop. Uh, <laughs> Torontonians with, without cars may not realize that they can access the ravines by transit. They don't oh, know, oh, right? Okay. <laughs> there yeah. we go. So if you were a black uh, woman or just a normal woman or homeless... Or homeless. And you were thinking, you know, I should go for a hike. And then you go, I don't have a car. And you go... Uh, no one's ever told them that they can reach it on the subway. Some seniors also, now we're <laughs> seniors, so we're down to 85% of the population. Basically the only people who know that they can hike is white, white old, men. 20 year old men. Just white men. But the only people smart the, enough who, to figure out hiking. Smart enough to figure out that they can hike. <laughs> Everybody else is just in the dark. Everybody else is in the dark. Some seniors need to feel confident that they'll be able to find a toilet or a place to sit down. So if you're, <laughs> that could be a problem for you too. If you went, that's and, literally my biggest nightmare when I go to a hike is that I have to take a shit. Yeah, that is not a seniors thing. <laughs> okay, that is honestly like on my to top thing. three thing. Is like, yeah, I, you get out to a hiking thing, and all of a sudden you're fucking just like, okay, so now thing. everyone hiking is just racist, sexist, and Danny phobic. Yeah, Danny phobic. <laughs> That is, it, it, it's a lot of it is like a mom with a kid where the dad's like, he should go for a hike. And the mom goes, well, he doesn't know where the subway is, how to get there on the subways. And she goes, yeah, literally the map's right there. And he goes, well, what if he has to take a dump? There's not enough washrooms. And he goes, well, what if he wants to sit down and take a nap on the bench and the benches aren't good enough? And the dad goes, then don't hike. I don't yeah, fucking yeah, I don't know. Care. Let me but the, it is, it's all the mom kind of being like, my kids, they, well, they, the world's rigged against them. Mm -hmm. And you go, I'm sure the hiking he can, world sure. Is. I'm sure he can figure out getting to a hike, and you go, "Well, why doesn't he hike?" He goes, "Because he loves video games, and he's fucking doesn't feel like hiking." Yeah, he's a lazy. Piece and you go, of "Well, shit. maybe he'd play less video games and hike more if he had a course in school about the subway system." <laughs> to the, and you go, "All right, keep playing video in games." Introduction to hiking. <laughs> it's like all about transit. Yeah, so Torontonia Torontonians without cars with that don't have cars don't realize, but white people are they know. They just know intrinsically. <laughs> that does sound like a black guy bid. Like, these white people, they fucking know. They just tell their self-driving car, hey, self-driving car, take me to hike. It's all like, beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop. <laughs> and they just hiking. <laughs> they're, 
the hurdle, some of the this is some of the hurdles that their people are dealing with. The women specifically, like a thirty yeah. year old woman that wants to hike. The hurdles you might deal with is simple as lack of signs indicating where to enter. So you literally, dig, my, if you do even figure out the subway, my biggest issue every time I go hiking, where the fuck am I going? This is not like yeah, yeah. I, but again, no, you know, <laughs> that's my problem too. But also, it's because I'm bad at that. Right. People who hike, they're like, yeah, I know exactly where I'm going. Oh, it's your God given gift as a man that it's, you know the entrances to the hiking path. There's no matter. The hurdle can be as simple as lack of signs. Do you ever just that? That's but if you're a woman, you get there, you finally figure out the subway system after years of research, <laughs> of years of oppression, find, of years of oppression. You get off the subway, you get to the hiking path, can't see the thing, back on the subway. Yeah, you can't find the start. You, you can't can... find the start. You just get back. Such wayfinding would be cheap to install, but some, but has sometimes been fought by locals who fear it will bring more traffic and people through what they see as their neighborhood. So they don't want more signs because I guess if you did live there, you'd be, oh, I don't want people. But I mean, they go, yeah, well, too bad. I don't know. Where I mean, I literally where I grew up, there's right like there's one house and then right beside it, there's like a big field that goes into a thing. This is there's not like huge. But I this is more this. importantly, the most municipal argument that anyone could ever have. The local people that live there don't want them to fucking do a big publicity campaign to make the thing. And other people do. Mm -hmm. This has absolutely nothing to do. Uh, the, making this about race is so fucking funny. You go, yeah, I mean, that that argument is taking place in countries with one race. Yeah. That argument has been taking place since the beginning of time. Like a park. They go, yeah, no, we don't want this park. Yeah, but don't make this park more accessible to homeless people because our kids play there. Yeah, but and also, then the, like, you And know, then people it, who don't live there and have don't live in the neighborhood go... Actually, we're going to make a homeless shelter there. And people who live there go, yeah, we don't want that. <laughs> I mean, this is just an argument that's been taking so place crazy. since the beginning of time. Yeah. Also, like, you know, go open up Google Maps, see where you are on the map, go find some green area and just walk towards it. Because just because it's not a designated. Well, not everyone has thing. a Danny guide. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, no, I guess not everybody has a phone. No, I, well, not every. Not everybody knows how to use Google Maps. People, not every person. Of not, everybody, has that. not everybody knows how to switch Google Maps over to from the hybrid view to the actual. Or if you're uh, a girl and you're just looking at Jezebel on your phone, they don't really know even how to switch from the Jezebel no. app to their map app. No. So why? Imagine they, it's almost, yeah, it really is. They're kind of making the same points you're making where they're like, women are so fucking bad at directions yeah. <laughs> that we need to put all these signs in or else they're being discriminated against. Yeah. Why some of the Torontonians might need encouragement to go to the ravines is complicated. <laughs> of course it is because you don't have an answer. So you have to make one up. The only reason it's complicated is because you're writing this article, you got to the point where you go, it's complicated, and you go, hmm, what's my point here? What am I trying to say? Like, she wrote that, she goes, it's complicated? She wrote that to herself as much as she's writing it to the reader. <laughs> she goes, it's complicated, because I'm like, I don't know what bullshit I'm about to make up <laughs> as to why people can't hike. <laughs> Uh, yeah, because her original point is that there's not enough black people there. Now we're at why? Why can't homeless people and women hike? <laughs> old people can't. And hike. whose fault is this? That's the main. Now thing. we have to point the blue, point the fingers. Whose fault is this? And we have to explain why this is even a problem to begin with. It's yeah. like women don't want to hike. Okay, don't hike. Yeah, like my mom doesn't want to hike. It's not because of like oppression or the it patriarchy. is. Yes, it's because she's of oppression. Just like, she fucking doesn't want to. I don't want to hike. Yeah, exactly. You, I tried to get you to go on a hike. In Austin. I'll tell you You're what. Like, no, I don't want to. I'm on the other side where I go. Listen, if you do want to make a thing where it's harder for women to hike, that means less hikes for me. So yeah. I'm actually all for it. Making you are all for it, right? And then you know the girl's gonna be say Ryan, we should go for a hike, and I'll go. Yeah, well, you know what? You go. Just have go you tried hiking lately? No, I go, go figure out how to get there and get back to me. And she'll, you know, I'll just come in. She'll be there. Papers everywhere. <laughs> she's on the floor. Just fucking, you know, yeah, she's just a mess. Just crying. Just just crying. A mess. Papers out. everywhere. Like, I can't figure. I'm not even going to be. There's no hike to today. <laughs> What's uncertain about the reception? Uh, oh, I skipped one part. So it's complicated. Advocates and experts of hike, hiking experts, dork squad, hiking and doesn't necessarily reflect a lack of interest. So they actually would love to go. Hiking experts, they literally go to Mountain Equipment Co-op and they just find any person who just like, sells <laughs> shoes there and go, hey, are you a hiking expert? Go, I mean, well, they say inside. it's not for lack of uh, interest that the women and people can't go. They actually love to go. I mean, why don't you uh, prove that? Take a poll in deep fucking Harlem. Go to the deep parts of the Bronx, do a poll of black people, how many of them want to hike. Yeah. And then you go, hmm, I guess my theory was proven wrong. That the, <laughs> it's not the lack of interest. No. 
Tur- yeah, I actually did a poll of, uh, and it turns out it actually was the lack of interest. It's light just yeah, it's it's uh the batteries died. That's fine. Oh. We made it to the thing. That's just the backlight. But okay. Um, so they have a hiking expert, I think, Ambika Tanetti a doctoral student from the University of Toronto who researches the engagement of recent immigrants with the urban forest. <laughs> you know, PhD. On yeah, it. you're going to be fucking declaring personal bankruptcy in your future, that's for sure. Drop 150 grand on a fucking, what is her doctor on? Her doctorate is in the engagement of recent immigrants with the urban oh, forest. Oh, that seems like a useful doctorate. <laughs> uh, that, that, that definitely seems like a good use of $150,000. This is the first time it's been cited ever. Yeah, you're like, this is the invented profession. <laughs> and the other advoc- doctor <laughs> this is like a pick your own doctor thing you go to school they go yeah just give us the 150 grand pick your own doctor i will fucking certify you you're a, you're a doctor nobody gives a shit immigrants but- in the urban forest uh, they have found some racial uh, i like that new term they found some racialized torontopians they've changed it every 15 days yeah. they found some racialized torontopians were uncertain torontopians yeah torontonians Tr- racialized torontonians were uncertain about the reception they'd get if for example they showed up in a hijab if you're, again, some people that are from different places, they might think th- that might be the case. If you, you might feel weird showing up in a job if you live in fucking certain places in America. That's not in Toronto. Everyone went to school with fucking 10 Okay, I, I have I have one here. Okay, so say it's just because most, you know, a lot of people say it's 35 degrees outside. Nice hot summer day, 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And you have to wear a burqa. Burqa is probably. You might be less likely to hike. You might be less likely to hike. So whose yeah. fault is that? Well, they should have air conditioned forests. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Like, okay, so whose fault is that? Like, people, women with burqa probably don't want to go on a fucking long ass hike on a hot ass day. Yeah, who are we blaming this? Who, on? who whose fault is that? Let's 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 take that down. As, a law, I guess. Another man. Yeah, we'll write that women. fucking article for the Globe and Mail. See how that goes. <laughs> go get your doctor to explain why that's fucking not okay. <laughs> But really, though, and especially the thing before, you go, listen, I actually might, if I was going on a hike and every 15 seconds was like a homeless guy doing drugs, yeah. I might be, I might say, yeah, I'm not going to do this trail again mm-hmm. if I was a hiker. Mm-hmm. If I saw women wearing hijabs, there would be, l- no one would ever think anything of that. No. Okay, shit. What would you, what, what, why I would think of it. I'd be like, care? that looks hot. Yeah, you think I'll that. be like, uh, I would be like, that looks so hot. <laughs> I couldn't. That's all I say. It was like, holy shit, because I'd be sweating. Or you'd look at the uh, the boyfriend or the husband of the girl in the hijab and be like, based. Based. <laughs> nice, super based. Make her fucking. <laughs> Yo, you got your shit under control. Make her sweat man. off those pounds. <laughs> Is that a garbage bag? <laughs> yeah, he says, that's because of articles, uh, or no, sorry, uncertain of a reception. They're uncertain of the receptions they get. So one of the problems is they're uncertain uh, the the reception that they get. Some of that is there's no reception at hiking. There's no reception. Nobody's at there hiking. to receive you. But also, these people write. The, you know, remember we're talking about the um, the contagion stuff. Yeah. If you write a four thousand articles being saying you know black people feel really weird when they're hiking. If you were a black person, you might start to be like, yeah, I don't know. Everyone's gonna look at me weird. Exactly. Yeah. It's self. So you go fulfilling prophecy. You go uh, these black people that have never been hiking, and you go. I don't know. People have been weird seeing me there, and you go. Why? I don't know. I read forty five articles that say if I get there, everyone's looking at me weird and shit. Unless you go on like a place, a city's like it's famous, fucking Toronto. Everyone's famous trying hike so- or something. Yeah, you see five people, but so many people are in Toronto, especially. It's like these people are s- diving to not be racist. Yeah, I bet you if they say, "Oh hi, hi," you know, of course, like it's a hiking. Ned, you're walking by Ned Flanders. Yes, and your interactions during hiking are so minimal. This isn't a biker who's in a fucking, you know, white supremacist organization. Yeah, but again, yes, if you're wearing some sort of like super restrictive thing, people may be like, that seems hot. And maybe they're like, don't say that seems hot. That's racist. And they I said, don't... yeah, no, for sure. It also is like, it's sort of, if you have a, if you're hiking, right? And you're, you, your trail, you're, you're, this is your product. Mm-hmm. So you're the, the, the government, I guess, yeah. the Toronto, right? Yeah. And then you have a product, which in this case is your trails. Mm-hmm. And they're saying, you know, other people aren't going to these trails or whatever, right? Yeah. If you were a business, you go, that's fine. But you're not a business. This is a free service that's offered. Yeah. Like, you- And it's barely a service. All they're doing is once a week making sure that like a tree didn't fall down on the trail or something. Like... <laughs> 
<laughs> it's not like, well, and, but, and then, the, you know, the, yeah. So if you go, we're not selling enough to this demographic, you go, maybe that demographic doesn't want our, uh, fucking pocket protectors we're selling. I guess. They're not selling a ton in certain communities. And you go, well, her answer is, well, every, that's because everyone's racist except for me. Mm. Essentially. Basically. Essentially. Yeah. A lot of people have, so the city needs to recognize that different cultures have different needs, which sounds like you'd be, yeah, yeah, and they like different things, like hiking, you know, you have, you have agreed. <laughs> but what she said was, a lot of people of colors communities like to sit and sit around and chat and socialize. They use the space differently. Uh, Mrs. That sounds Kennedy's, like a park. <laughs> that's you're you're Ravines are park. generally trails, so you just have to walk, and there's no place to sit down. <laughs> yeah, because you just described a park, you fucking idiot. Which there's a ton of those. She says people of color are not because they like to chit chat more. If you think you walk around Toronto and there's a, in the summer and there's any shortage of racialized groups sitting around in parks, chit chatting and hanging yeah. out, like it's everywhere. But they should, yeah, they need basically more benches on the hiking trail. They're just like we just need to ruin because hikes they need, because they need to chat. <laughs> not a hike man. imagine that that You're their hiking, example man. they go well black women can't fuck i mean when women i guess do they're like well hiking is unappealing because they like to chit chat yeah. <laughs> they can chit chat while they hike <laughs> why can't they chit chat while they're hiking it's insane <laughs> it's fucking nuts so people of color like to chat more <laughs> it's racist because they don't have enough chatting areas um See, this is starting to feel to me, this article, I feel almost bad saying this, but just because with the Oscar thing, where this is like, because obviously this is a black girl who's doing this. Maybe. This feels like Globe and Mail was trying to like not get in trouble by like throwing this girl a bone on like, here's an article you can write, we'll publish it. Yeah. Just or, for some diversity or, thing. or not even throwing just a for bone as much as thing. they're held hostage. Where they yeah, go, they're held hostage. We think this article is very, very important and she's got like a big Twitter and stuff. No, it's more like they're like, they're, they just said, here, we'll give her a... Uh, we like you. Well, Here's an article. I'm not saying you're right and I'm wrong. It could be either. Yeah. Uh, we don't know the answer, but I'm saying it's also possible in a lot of these scenarios where you have some super vocal woman that's like, you know, you know, she's tweeting online about everyone's I've, racist. I've heard this. these exist. And then she goes up to her boss and she goes, I'm writing this article about, uh, and then if they say no, they're racist now. Yeah, you know they're, what I mean? they're, they're part of the. Yeah. So there's hiking conspiracy. Yeah, maybe it's the throw a bone, but maybe it's also fear based too. Mm -hmm. I guess the problem is that all this like equity stuff makes you start to think that like a rational. It does make logical way is you think what is like, why was this ever published? Was this, you know, to placate someone or is is it like she actually cares about this? Yeah. Well, anyways, that was a fucking end of that one. But. There's a few a few other things I want to talk about. Actually, one in specific. Can I just say one thing because this reminds no. me of that? So this was funny is because saying how like hiking's not accommodative, and then in when we were in Miami at the beach, there were a lot of Orthodox Jews in the area I was staying, and we went to the beach one day, and there was like an Orthodox couple, a guy and a girl, and the guy was straight up long pants, like white button down dress shirt, and he was just like up to his knees in the ocean. <laughs> Come enjoying on. the ocean he's like that's how he's allowed to enjoy the ocean he has to keep the pants on yeah why does he have to keep the pants on because it's not modest it's immodest oh so even guys like showing your calves like yeah what are you trying to give me a boner <laughs> <laughs> basically but i'm just saying like yeah the beach is not super receptive to guys who have to wear a suit every day in <laughs> miami in the fucking summer they make it work well they should do something about that <laughs> maybe they should offer jewish people uh, some sort of a wetsuit that they get to wear under their suit that should be provided the women do by the have, state. The women, yeah, the state should be provided. The women do have like very full, long, like it's like a wetsuit with a dress. Is the bonnet part of the wetsuit? Yeah. <laughs> it's like a waterproof. Probably don't get that wet. <laughs> 